Hello, hello, everyone. Hopefully you can see and hear us now. Jay, you good? Kind of. <laughs> you can kind of hear us? Kind of hear you. Is it, is it loud around? enough for you? I, isn't, I'll, I'll just have to be a very good listener. Um, Jay Brad said to take the lens cap off of your webcam. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I just... I think in this instance, it'd be earplugs or put your hearing oh aid in. Old man, old man, put your hearing aid in. <laughs> well, hopefully everyone's in the room. You can see us and hear us now. And thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Lisa. I'm part of the team here at Bo Today. And joining us today are Jay Boatwright from Smacks Photography. He's also the Director of Education for Bo Today. Um, and a trailblazer, as well as Justin Grafton. Um, and Justin is uh, part of the Photo Day team as well, because he is a Photo Day trailblazer and early adopter of the platform. And um, today, for those of you that might have never met Jay or Justin before, I just wanted to kind of do a quick intro and like maybe give us a little spiel, like, you know, two minutes about yourself, what you do, what you specialize in, and why you do it. Um, so everyone here today joining us can meet you guys because, you know, you're awesome. Who wants to go? Go ahead, Justin. No, you're up. <laughs> no, we've been, wait- we've been waiting for you. Yeah, I need, no, I need is- time. I need time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so, I'm going to make our, make our um, slides bigger so we can see each other more on the screen. There we go. There we go. That's nice. That's All nice. right. Jay, you're up. We waited this long. Oh, my long. gosh. The camera is one thing for me. Just can't. The one little thing I'm asking for. Okay. I'm Jay Boatwright. Uh, We have a company called Smacks Photography out of Atlanta, Georgia. We do pretty much 98% of our stuff is sports photography. So we've been using Photo Day for about three years. We switched uh, after the pandemic. We switched everything over to Photo Day. So we're 100% Photo Day. And um, things have been great. We've been doing good. Uh, I guess the biggest thing I could say in introduction into Photo Day is that we completely changed our shooting style to accommodate the platform. We didn't ask the platform to accommodate us. That's one of the biggest tips I could possibly give to somebody who just starts out. Follow that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin, you are. I up. hate that he had a good tip. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring any tips in my bag to give anybody. So, um, yeah, I started. You know, we started getting to the point where our small business hit a ceiling and we we got overwhelmed. We were way overwhelmed with the back end work specifically, you know, paperwork and whatnot. And photo day came along at, you know, the perfect time for our studio. Uh, it's just I, I do all the shooting. And then we have Emily, who is my other half. She does all the back end uh, work. And there would have been no way for us to do the volume we do without you know, what photo they created for us. So uh, we did exactly what Jay's tip said. We, we used it as a tool for our business and it, it really allowed us to grow and, and to do better as a company as a whole. I mean, it just helps so many things. So, I mean, we can go into detail about that later, obviously. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As we go along. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. I know your time is important to you and especially as things are slowing down and you just want to take a break. So I just want to say from all of us, thank you for, spending um, an hour or so with us today to talk shop um, at the end of the season. So I guess I'll like kick it off. Like um, Jay, like one of the biggest things, like, I mean, I think when, when moving to the photo day or online sales in general is like your images, right? The image first selling. And Mm -hmm. I think like, that's one of the, you know, that's why we're here today to talk about images, um, how, how good your images need to be. Um, how that affects your sales, how that affects your participation and all that good stuff. So, I mean, I guess like what was one of the first things that you noticed, like your very first job, if you can rewind back when you started posting on photo day, what was one of the first things you noticed about um, customers responding to the images and your sales in general? Uh, Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, to be honest, the very first job wasn't great. I mean, we did um, a fall ball league. Um, and we're like, okay, let's just, you know, like everybody, like, let's try it out on league that, it, you know, doesn't matter so much. We didn't put it on our biggest <laughs> league, right? And um, I think, you know, sales were okay, but it was kind of hard to gauge because it was a fall league. We've never done fall. We, we made up a fall league. We're like, hey, we're trying this new platform. Do you mind letting us do 
fall pitchers for baseball when we usually don't do it. So there could have been a number of factors involved why the sales weren't great. But it still took us a while to figure out how to maximize sales. I still don't think it's something that you just turn on and, and uh, Photo Day is a great platform, but you still can't just put photos in Photo Day and expect for sales to come. You still have to put forth the effort in order to market before, during, and after the shoot. And if you don't do that, then you're going to have trouble. So I think that as our Photo Day sales have gotten better and better, it's because not only has the platform gotten better, and the parents, of course, love the platform, but we got better selling the platform if that makes sense yeah yeah i mean can you um maybe justin you can chime in here too like one of the first things that you noticed um you know when you first started using photo day like what was that um big thing for you when customers first accessed the platform or maybe you even as a studio um trying to figure out what types of images to create for your first few jobs <laughs> Um, you know, it, we didn't, we weren't using it to its full potential yet. It, I don't know that anybody is, to be honest yet. It's still, you know, fairly new. There's still so many different ways to use it that I think that we haven't even come up with. We've, I've seen some pretty creative stuff here lately in the users group, you know, as far as how people are using it for, um, you know, capture app reasons and whatnot. And what I noticed when we used that specific app, capture app in schools is, um, it changed how we shot, you know, it, just like it did Jay on his sports side. It didn't change how I shot sports significantly yet for us. We were taking multiple pictures of kids and selling, you know, a set of images now. No matter that started immediately because it just comes with the, you know, it comes with the territory. I think when you we, when you get into a situation where you're not writing photo numbers down or having to pay attention to any of that stuff, you you become a photographer again, and so you get to you get to take photos and concentrate on taking the best photos you can because now people get to see them first before they buy them. So, you know, you, your picture has to be better than it, than it ever has been. And it has to continue to get better. You can't, you can't get lazy about that. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Right. So now you have this kind of creative freedom to start creating all these images, but you know, let's just face it in volume, you know, you have a schedule and you got to stick to it and you got, you know, maybe, you know, 15 kids every you know, five minutes or whoever you're scheduling, you know, depending on the type of job. So how do you, um, back to you, Jay, like, how do you manage um, your schedule to accommodate and how do you get through like a set of images so quick to be able to offer a variety? Maybe we can, how did that change um, from paper forms when you moved to photo day? Did your schedule change a lot? Did your mm -hmm. flow change? What are some of the things that you started to notice? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're definitely slower than we were before, um, because, you know, we're taking several, you know, with, especially when mirrorless came out and you took the image and you could see in the viewfinder, if you got the image, you can move to the next subject pretty quick, um, because you only needed one image for paper order form. So having to switch over to providing five images, let's say four to five images for the subject, then it's going to take a little bit longer. So Karina did, it did took us a little while to figure out how the schedule need to go. And so we allow for a little bit more time um, per team than we would with paper order forms. But again, the trade-off was worth it because we're doing better financially um, by taking several images of each kid. But it was a learning curve to figure out like, how can I make this, um, these images look different. So that way parents have more to choose from. Um, but also not so does it take so long that it's going to delay the shoot and you're going to look unorganized, un unprofessional and coaches are going to get mad. So yeah, there was a definitely a learning curve. We had to increase the time of shooting and then we had to figure out how, how we were going to not significantly a little bit, get a little, a little bit more time then also how are we going to make our images look different without doing a bunch of different poses? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think all of that, right. You're doing more images now, um, you know, with this workflow and we'll get more into that in a bit, but even with the additional images, then you have some additional post-processing and I know mm -hmm. Justin, you've got like a pretty, you know, you guys both have really great systems, but that's something that, you know, maybe you didn't have to think so much before about on paper forms because there, you know, there was only one image per kid you had to worry about. Now you got a variety of images. So how does that, you know, inflate your post-processing time? And, you know, can you talk about some of the tools that you might you use in your, in your studios to expedite that process? Um, I'm a big fan of Lightroom. So I use Lightroom 
I've, I've used it since version one. And so I've, I've grown with it as it's, you know, come through its different stages of life. So I feel like I'm pretty dangerous in there and, and I'm pretty fast. I know that it's, there's faster programs for certain th- for certain needs. Again, it's a, it's a tool that works for my business. Uh, people have to, you know, use tools that work for their workflow. And we talk about that a lot, like uh, in beer in the boat, you know, we discuss, you know, tips and tricks and stuff. That's a little, a little nudge for later, but we, um, <laughs> we, we talk about that. Jay and I have a podcast um, and we discuss, you know, good and bad things of anything in this industry. And, you know, I think that, I think that people get a lot out of that too, you know, in future episodes. And we also have like 11 up already now. So. But, hey, we're, I mean, we're definitely going to talk about I mean, beer in the boat. Look at him. I mean, <laughs> He says he's fast. I mean, nobody doubted that. Look at him. When I look at Justin, I think speed, <laughs> speed, sleek. Look at him. I am. I'm. I I'm. Mean, I'm perfectly built. Really. <laughs> Justin. Yeah, perfect. He's aerodynamic. For yeah. yeah. Speed. Photo yeah. editing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and capturing. <laughs> but I come, you know, part of part of that speed though in Lightroom comes from, you know, when I shot weddings and it transferred over. You can have thousands of images from a wedding. Well, I'll have thousands of images from a um from a shoot. If I'm if I've got a system down and my workflow is consistent, I can edit thousands of images, you know, an hour, honestly. Yeah. Well, yeah. too, if you do a better job in the camera, then it's not that much editing. Right. And, you know, we figured out pretty quick that we're gonna Instead of pushing paperwork, because if you really think about it, you know, uh, for us, if we shot Friday, Saturday, and Sunday um, throughout the week and throughout the week, let this is a Saturday, Sunday, two shoots, Saturday, two shoots, Sunday, we have 300 order forms, let's just say on average, each shoots, that's 1200 order forms. And then you're having to touch each one of those order forms multiple times. So there was a staff of people in here just double checking order forms. So even if you said 1,200 kids that, that weekend, I know there's some people up there, out there that are shooting 10,000 kids per league, what, what is being said. But I, realistically, let's just say 1,200 kids in a weekend, uh, and you're pushing all that paperwork. You have to have a staff of people. If you have, um, I don't know, let's just say if you had uh, 5% mistakes, so you're 95% accurate, right? So that's still going to be 60 phone calls that you got to make throughout the week to change and make sure everything is done properly. So that sucked. We had to have a bunch of people. It was very stressful and we had a timeline because we had to turn those order forms in in order to get them to the lab, in order to get them back to the coaches. And so they could pass out photos. So it was an extremely stressful process. So we figured that we're going to have to, instead of pushing paperwork, we're going to be editing images. And I, as a photography company, would much rather edit images and not have to deal with all those timelines, you know, photo day cuts out a lot of timelines. So I'd rather edit images and do photography stuff than actually being a paperwork guy. And that's what we were. We were paperwork. Karina was very stressed because handling all that paperwork, dealing with all the mistakes, dealing with the misspelled memory mate names, all that sort of stuff. It was just terrible. It was no good. Yeah. Well, I think Jay, most volume photographers, and maybe you can agree with this statement, but I think when we say like, you know, 10,000 kids on a weekend, it's kind of like the weather, like in Florida right now, it's 85, but it feels like a hundred degrees. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, 500 kids can definitely feel like 2000, depending on their age group. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. You know, that's something that, you know, but the photographers need to know, especially they're just starting out. Y'all need to know something. There's these photographers that tout all these numbers and I'm, we'll cuss on beer in the boat, but man, I mean, it, it, they're, they're not telling the truth. There's so many different ways you can count numbers of kids. You can say, okay, we had the number of kids that, you know, the league told us, which is always inflated, right? Justin, they're always like, I have 800 kids. You show up and you're like, dude, you have 300 kids in this league. That is BS. So don't be intimidated if you hear all these big numbers out there. It's actually when we count kids is like when they show up for picture day, we count the group photos, how many kids showed up, that's how many kids you're photographing per league. And so you don't have to listen to many. Well, it's not how many there. pictures you take either. Yeah. You can't. You know, it's not yeah. That, and so, you know? yeah. And I just feel like sometimes people feel like, oh, my business is so small or whatever. Half the people are inflating their numbers by a significant amount. So don't be intimidated by those little <laughs> tactics. That's good advice. Definitely Can you good tell advice. I'm wondering today? So, yeah, somebody got, <laughs> some, somebody woke up the wrong side of the bed today. Listen, <laughs> I woke spicy. up with an inch of water underneath my bed. How about that? Water under, do you have a water bed still? No, 
Is that too much information on a webinar? So no, we had a pipe break. So I've been on my hands and knees vacuuming water like this. That's why we haven't heard from Jay all day. Yeah. All day. He hasn't even texted yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about, you know, a little bit about the volume now. And I think um, one of the things or one of the questions that a lot of people that are just moving from paper to online, they really want to know. And, and one of the mistakes we see is people getting too carried away with the amount of images that they're creating. And I think Sean had a question here too, like, you know, the one mom told him not to overwhelm them with all these different images. Do you have like a sweet spot for the number of poses? And I know that's probably varies depending on the type of job um, mm -hmm. that you're doing, but um, you know, like maybe for, we can start out with sports and go into school and go into dance. And do you guys have like this um, sweet spot or what, what do you really aim for? Um, how many images do you want? to give to the customer to look and choose from. Okay. So I guess I'll go with that. Um, it, like, it is variable. There's no magic number. Um, and oftentimes we get to the shoot and we have a plan at the shoot. Like, okay, we're doing uh, four images. This is our progression. So we, we discuss it. And then if we have time, we'll do five. Um, and, you know, if it's super busy, if we have a gigantic shoot, then we'll do three. And we can talk about it with each other as we go. Like, okay, this is where we need to be. This is how many photos we're taking of each athlete. Um, and now if it's two teams, then, you know, I might have two cameras sitting beside me and I'll shoot 10 photos of each kid. If it's a smaller situation, because I want to get as most, if I'm out there and I'm all set up and I got two teams, I'm going to take as many photos as possible. So I have the best chance for having those, you know, photo day 100s. That's what I'm going to do. But if it's a big giant league and I've got, a um, hundred teams and I might only be able to take three or fo four photos. Um, so it, it all depends on the situation. You have to like really analyze each shoot separately and decide which is going to be best, how you're going to get the most sales. And, you know, so I guess I would say big leagues, four to five, three to five. And if I have a smaller, uh, smaller shoot, then I'm going to shoot five to eight. But it, we're talking about different images, right? You're not totally switching poses, are you? And and repositioning light? No, um, no. only in the small shoots. The big shoots, you cannot. The big shoots, mm -hmm. you have to go with one pose. Get, we give them options, go with one pose, and then we shoot at different camera angles using mirrorless cameras. So um, for me, um, I know some people don't use them, but I think the mirrorless cameras, if you're going to shoot, uh, for photo day, like I said at the, at the beginning, you have to change your shooting style, style for the photo day platform, not the opposite way. So if you've been shooting DSLRs, they're great cameras and all, but it's not as flexible. You don't have the opportunity to make as much money because you can't get different angles fast. So I feel like that is an important way to maximize your sales with photo day. And the only way to do that is with mirrorless cameras. Can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to try after that mic drop statement. Today. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Bill had a question, like, are you only taking um, one image per pose? No, or one pose, doing... four to five different look. We call them looks, not poses. So we have a, a look. So when we're explaining to parents, we don't ever say the word pose. If you tell people I'm going to do four to five poses, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So we say four to five looks and we make the looks full body, half body, smile, gain face from the ground, from the eye, different um, uh, expressions, different angles that allows the photo to look completely different. So that's, that's what we want to go for. So one pose for big shoots, big shoots, one pose, multiple looks. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You just saw my daughter come in, Carly, my oldest, she's a dancer and going to dance camp this afternoon. <laughs> so um, but yeah, so yeah, multiple looks and multiple ex expressions. I think one of the, the cool things that I saw, you know, if we go back from sports into school photography, like in an underclass or elementary environment where you're photographing really, really quick and you don't have a whole lot of time to create these different looks. Justin, I saw you do some pretty, you got some pretty cool tricks up your sleeves to get a more variety of expression, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's... Jay kind of hit some some marks there too, where photo day changes, you know, how we how we approach what we do on a day to day. And when he talks about getting different looks, 
what he means is different facial expressions. Um, you know, where he goes game face smile. You always have mom back there telling the kid to smile when you're asking for a game face or vice versa. You want the kid to give you a game face and then mom's back there yelling smile or, you know, you, or you're doing it just the opposite way. But anyway, that's, that's a good reason why you should shoot more than one look because mom wants one thing. The kid wants another um, grandma might want another one, you know, now you now you're selling three different looks out of your five images so you're giving them more options um i do that with school portraits we get we ask the kids you know they sit down i seem to always get a really sweet picture on the first one usually then i ask them if they want to give me a smile you know if they want to give me a real smile i've got a little system where i work through that so as i'm doing all this i'm t- i'm progressing the photographs and towards the end i ask them if they want to give me a funny face and then the very next picture after the funny face is a real legitimate smile it's as big as it'll ever get so because they feel like they got away with something but then i end up yeah. selling all of those poses not poses excuse me looks but, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah look and i mean i think you touched on something really important what you kind of both did but i mean the name of the game when you first look at a photo of yourself or like the first thing you look at is not the lighting and the composition right it's the expression on your face mm-hmm. it's like the very first thing anyone looks at when they when they view a photo of themselves and i think sometimes Um, You can get so lost in like making sure everything is perfect. And then we lose focus on the expression and the expression is really what sells, right? That's, that's really the number one thing. So it's kind of like you have to think about all these different things, but expression first um, and then everything else. I don't know, Jay, you got secrets to this because of your uh, boat, right? Bootcamp and you teach Mm -hmm. this. Um, Yeah, I have a sample for you. I was pulling one up. Let's see if I can, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we can see so, it. so big league, you have full body, right? Smile. And then um, next photo is going to be half body smile. Looks completely different. And then you turn the camera over and you get a landscape. Then you go from the ground game face. So you can see the contrast between these two photos, right? They're completely different. And yeah. so that's, and then you go half body. So that's what I mean. If you have a big league, we had, you know, I don't know. There might have been 50 teams that day. So we just mix it up like that. And me and Scott or me and Jody are always talking throughout the shoots, like what, what photos are you taking, you know, depending on, and that's, that's the way you do it. And by using mirrorless cameras, you can go from the ground. You can ask Justin this because Justin had a mirrorless camera, but the the screen didn't flip out. Right. You know, there's like even equipment that you have to buy that is specifically for a photo day. So there's some mirrorless cameras out there. The screen doesn't flip right. And you can't get that photo from the ground. So you have to be, you know, intentional with everything that you buy, everything that you do to shoot for the platform so you can make the most money. Yeah. Um, I think Owen has a question here. Can you quickly go into uh, what about mirrorless gives you more options for angles than uh, a DSLR? Yeah. When Jay says that, what he's talking about is the way, you know, in the style that he's shooting, he's getting different looks and um, different angles. And I always just showed, you know, those different progressions where you turn the camera a different composition every time is basically what you're after. Mm -hmm. You can get that with a DSLR. Um, You're just going to be shooting at F8, you know, and you're not going to get a good depth of field for what you're, you know, what you're shooting, which is at the end of the day, the best portrait you can take, you know, so. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, also you got to you have to keep in mind that you're going to have a a 2 second preview of after you take each photo which you don't have that with a DSLR. So with the DSLR, right? Justin, you no, take photos. No, you do, my D7 you my go back and play. my Nikon's had that. You can it's a setting. My Nikon's had that where it, I know, it shows but you the have photo. to take your eye off the camera. Correct. Right. Yeah. So with yeah. with a mirrorless, you keep your eye inside the camera. You take the photo. You see it's like a little TV screen. Mm-hmm. So not only can you check your lights, your focus, all that good stuff, you have a built in loop. So those of us yeah. who are shooting outside and you're on, on the turf field and it's, you know, as bright as it can possibly be, um, you have a built in loop. So there's just so many advantages um, to the mirrorless. And, you know, it's it's a must have, in my opinion. Yeah, the the auto the autofocus is brilliant. You know, it's it's just it's just unmatched. It really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um you get I a lot know more this keepers. Is, this is Jay's favorite topic, but um uh shooting green screen and it and oh, for extraction. Justin. I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna <laughs> hold on a second. Let me cut my camera off. <laughs> <laughs> But um, so for for Justin, 
I know you do green screen. Are you giving multiple looks um, when you're doing compositing as well? I am. Um, you know, we we've switched since our green screen days. We've uh, we've done a lot of green screen, but I've really kind of fallen in love with the last delight lately. We've been shooting on white. Uh, I just I like it. It's uh, been a more consistent workflow for us lately. So, but same. Uh, all the same principles apply, whether you're shooting on white, gray, black, or green, or blue, whatever. There, you know, you, you have to light it correctly. You have to understand how, you know, how all that works in order to get the best extraction you can get. And yeah, I shoot multiple images. You know, I'll shoot, you know, I'll shoot up to five usually on green screen, depending on how many teams I have. If it's, you know, if we've got more than six teams, I'm only shooting, you know, one for the team photo, and then maybe two more is on maximum three because you have a lot more work on green screen. Now you want to go back to editing. Uh, you have a lot more edit work. You're, if you're doing it yourself, which I do all that in house. Um, so there's different, there's different methods to that. Obviously you can send all that out or you can have photo day, cut out your green screen stuff now too. Um, I personally do it in house right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, we got some more questions rolling in here. Um, for for Jay, are you shooting mirrorless and continuous lighting versus strobes? No, you uh, not outside. You continuous lighting you can't use outside. I mean, you can, but at night. But during the day, um, if you had a continuous light that was bright enough to light up the subject, it would completely blind them. So they wouldn't even be able to open their eye. Yeah, it'd be like staring so, into the sun, like literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah literally. Yeah. So yeah. So it's all uh, it's all flash. We use a uh, flashpoint and um, flash. I'm sorry, Godox. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much the only brand that's for us at this point, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, with, with the different options out there. Mm -hmm. We all know you're a gear junkie too. Yes. In case you don't know, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you get any lens flare from uh, the last light, Justin, when you're shooting with a last light? No, that's part of your setup. If you're getting lens flare, uh, well, one, I guess you, we've got a lot. I, I shoot with really good glass. I shoot with the G Masters on my Sony. So, you know, yeah. they're set up to have less flare anyway. But if you're getting flare, if you're getting lens flare off that last light, there's a couple of things you can do. You can turn your light so that it's bouncing off the back. That's one way to help even that spread of light out inside the last light. Don't just shoot it straight towards the front or straight across. Um, technically, they want you bouncing it off the back wall. And the second tip I have for you for that is your, your settings aren't correct if you're getting flare. You shouldn't get any flare. If you have that, it's, it's blowing out highlights behind your subject. So you want the cleanest cutout you can get. And if you have flare in the hair, you're not going to get a good cutout. So if anything, you're better off shooting underexposed on site and actually bringing those levels up in post production. And that's again, that's another reason why we shoot raw too. Sometimes it saved us more than once in my lifetime. So I can't imagine shooting JPEG again. I know there's still people out there that do it, but we don't, we shoot raw. So yeah. shoot underexposed, bring those exposures up. Um, that's that's my best tip for you. Don't that'll get rid of your flare. Yeah, I feel like everybody has a slightly different workflow. There's not really like a right and wrong way. I think mm -hmm. you make it work for what you want to do and the tools that you have available. But um, the one thing that I do see both of you guys constantly doing is is working on workflow improvements on the back end and looking and trying out new gear and new software and figuring out what works best, um, which I think is like it's important to note technology is always changing there's always something new coming out a new way to do things so it's really helpful to have these discussions and share resources and and figure out you know how you know justin you do things one way jay you do things one way maybe you guys give each other ideas i know you do that too <laughs> so mm -hmm. on All the time. what you can uh make better so for sure. Um, so we talked a lot about technique, but um, I think like one of the, the big questions we always have, um, and then maybe you guys can touch on this a little bit, but yes, you're photographing team and individual, but there's also opportunity for like buddy and sibling photos and family photos, um, because now you're selling this in this image first workflow. And, and can you touch on a little bit of that? Like, how do you handle those situations? And, and how does that affect your, your sales? Um, when you're able to squeeze some of those things in on a picture day? Uh, I think it's, it's always, a, um, it's a great 
so I mean, pe- the more people that come, I'm willing to shoot. I mean, they're going to buy the photos. So I think it's important to offer buddy photos, but it's also important to uh, know your technique and have a plan when you have buddy images, because if you don't, that can completely stall a photo shoot. Um, so you better know how to get those buddy shots done quickly and have a plan for it. Um, so we do practice that a lot. We have our method on how to do buddy shots so we can keep the shoot moving. The worst thing you can do is have somebody come in and the kid gets their photo taken and they walk away and then they say, Oh, but can we get the sibling photo? Then you got to reset up everybody and then they'll do it again. And then, you know, it'll just keep happening. So you have to make sure like as you're shooting as a photographer, we have assistants, I'm looking, and if there's a kid that doesn't have a uniform on for that particular team, the chances are he's a buddy. So I make sure, say, okay, is that his brother right there? Yeah, stay, stay right there. As soon as I get done with this this subject, I need you to slide in there. So not only do you need – it's good to encourage buddy shots because you're going to do better sales, but it's also very important that you have a plan on how to do those buddy shots quickly so that way you don't completely start your shoot, and then that just makes it look unprofessional if you're running behind and you look unorganized. Yeah, Justin, you do. Um, I know you have a portrait business as well. Um, so how do you how do you mitigate that? Like, there's a lot of people that um, you know will shoot family photos if mom and dad are there at like let's just say a league sports day. Um, but then you're also you also have this portrait side of your studio too. Um, how do you how does that work? Like, if there's a family, do you still photograph them in that league type environment, all dressed up, and then? You know, do you market to them for actual family portraits as well? Um, yeah, I don't do any secondary marketing. I probably should have started that years ago. But, I mean, we we look at our schedule, and, and I don't know how much more we could possibly do, to be honest. So we haven't really <laughs> hit the marketing train probably like most people have to, especially when you're first starting out. We've been doing this 11 years now. So we've got a great clientele, and they just – they just keep coming back over the years and, and it's been a really good work work system for us. But I do, I, I shoot buddy pictures like Jay does. I just, I sold my first canvas through photo day the other day because the mom and the dad were there and wanted a picture with brother and sister. They were in the same rec league, threw them all in there and they bought a 16 by 20 canvas out of that one shot. So, you know, there's, there's money to be made when, when you, when you leave the door open to make it what we can't, you know, we might have one plan in our head, but sometimes you have to be able to, you know, drift a little bit and change your plan um, to benefit, you know, your company. And I think that, you know, photo day taking away some of those strings that were attached, like paperwork and that kind of stuff, it kind of frees you up to be able to notice that stuff quicker and easier. I've noticed that, you know, we've made changes, you know, for to better our workflow because we have had more time to think about our system and, and what we're doing. So. Yeah. And I feel like those are the photos that get shared the most right around social media. Like if you're at an event, Jay, I notice sometimes when you are out of the league and you photograph like a family or, you know, maybe the league director and their kid or whoever, the league president, you post those on social media and then everybody sees like that you're doing these family portraits out um, at the events and like, how does that help you as far as like marketing or maybe customers see it and they're like, you know, they come to your next event. They might not be at that league. They're at another league you're shooting. Do they, do they ask you for things like that? Does it jam up your schedule at all? Or, you know, can you talk about a little bit? Yeah, um, there's several things. Um, first of all, when I'm talking to a board member and I'm trying to sell the league, we're letting them know that we do buddy photos um, in addition to regular photos. It doesn't cost anything. So if there's a family that has several children in the league that they could possibly save some money by doing individual and individual buddy shot and they can combine those all into one package so as far as the board goes they love that option um also if you're bidding for a league and you want to offer um, a freebie offering the coaches with their player that's always a great thing because that's like you know you can call it whatever you want 35 dollars value you have a digital images and those are all offered to the coaches for free that gives you a chance to include that as part of your bid so that's a good uh thing there and then also, um, you know, at, at the shoot, when you're telling moms and dads that you can do these buddy sh- sh- photos and words start getting around and everybody starts talking, and just it just it creates a good atmosphere and people are excited about photos, you know. So it's as far as marketing goes, it, it's a great marketing tool for several different reasons. So we use all those. We try to maximize all those things. And uh, I don't know if you saw, like I did a Father's Day thing um, for, I did an Instagram reel and it was all coaches and their, you know, 
dads and their players. And um, it was fantastic. I got so many comments about that. And, and not until you kind of go back and look at that on a day like Father's Day and you kind of realize what you're doing, that, you know, you're taking photos that are very meaningful that people are going to hold on to for a long time. And Karina, I get the comments once a week, probably of people telling us, you know, um, our photos are the fo- fa- the uh, best photos they've ever had their athlete that stays in their home. And it's, it's very rewarding. And taking those father, son or coach uh, player uh, pictures uh, is really important to do just to kind of, you know, document that time in somebody's life. Um, and, you know, it kind of sounds cheesy, but when I did that uh, father's day thing, it was, it was great. I really enjoyed doing it. And I think it was a good thing to show all the cust- our customers. And I guarantee you that this coming season, I'm going to be doing more father, son po- <laughs> photos just because we created that video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to note too, like even as parents, um, you know, if you're not a photographer, well, maybe even if you are, so many of us don't like to be in front of the camera. You'd rather be behind the camera, but there's so many opportunities where there's not a lot of photos that you have with your own kids. So having those pictures captured at convenience on picture day or have bringing a parent in, jumping in with the with their child. I mean, it's so important. Like you said, sometimes that's the only picture they have Mm -hmm. um, or the only professional picture they have um, like a father, son or a mom and daughter, or just a family (laughs) portrait. Um, Some people don't go out of their way and have family portraits done. So the only time it happens is during like a rec league or um, you know, another activity. So those are important too. Well, so. and let me tell you, like, and I know Justin's taken several photos of people who have passed away and we've, we've had that too. And uh, uh, the, the saddest one was a kid who committed a twin who committed suicide. And that photo of his two boys and the coach was the last formal photo they had. So it is, you know, it is super important. I have to tell you that I wouldn't have taken that photo without photo day, because if you pay for order forms, right. You're like, I'm not taking this picture unless I have another order form. People are just going to be like, ah, I'm not going to do it because I just, I don't feel like filling out another piece of paper. And so that completely takes that barrier down. You're like, oh, come on. I'll, if you want the photo, let's do it because the chances are they're going to buy. And it, you know, it just, it, by using photo day, we're allowed to do those things that we probably wouldn't have done with paper order forms. Yeah. And Justin, I think you said this during your uh, sync presentation that kind of resonated with me, but like you were calling, you know, professional photographers are, historians right you're capturing these moments um and they're recorded in history of these families of these children throughout their milestones so i mean it is important and the more variety the more of that history you're capturing the more valuable volume photography becomes it's convenient and it's extremely valuable so yeah volume photography has always kind of maybe maybe been on the lower tier list of um you know, how good are photographers levels. Right. But I think that when you up your game and you show people that we are professional photographers and we're going to take a nice photograph, no matter what the conditions are, you know, that's why we're professionals. Um, and it might be the only photograph that you're you've ever had taken in your whole life by a professional might be, might've been from when you were in a rec league. Um, yeah, I'm going to take that picture serious. You know, I'm going to take it serious because I'm going to take your photo hopefully in the school's K through 12th grade. I'm going to hopefully, you know, grow with you. And I want to take every single one of those photos. Uh, One of the things that we do in a small community is we've built these relationships with these families over the years. And um, I have also built relationships over the last 11 years with kids. Now I've taken their photograph from first grade all the way till the graduation. And my photos of those kids have gotten better every year of that kid because of our relationship we've built. They know I'm consistent. They see me every year. Um, it makes taking a photo that, of them that much better, that much easier every year too. So it's interesting yeah. what photo days allowed us to be able to do and get back to being a, being a photographer. And we have to, we, uh, you know, we got to be better than those cell phones. So we have to bring the magic and you better be good with your gear. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of that, um, you know, going from paper to online or going from just package first or product first selling to image first selling, obviously we talk about the variety of images um, and the gear that we're using, but, you know, and the, the quality of expression, but the quality of images themselves, like competing with, you know, you're competing with your customer, basically mom with the camera in her pocket, um, the new, you know, iPhones and galaxies just take amazing photos and she's got her kid in front of her more than you do, obviously. So, I mean, what are, you know, 
can you maybe show off or like, you know, give people that are tuning in today an idea of like these quality images um, that you are presenting to parents and, and, and why you do things that way. Uh, go ahead, Justin. I mean, I could, I don't know if Jay can. <laughs> I was waiting for this part. <laughs> um, go ahead, Jay. Yours is probably all ready to bring up already, isn't it? Or do you want What's to see that? some of mine? No, I'll, I actually wasn't going to show mine. Um, oh, you weren't. Back. Yeah, let's uh, give me give me a second, and um, we'll 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 have a chance to discuss. <laughs> let's see here. Um, give me a second, but yeah, I mean the thing is, is no iPhone is going to compete with with our quality of photography. You're just not going to let it happen. They just can't. It's just still not there yet. They just can't, you know, do creative lighting. So there's no. Um, you know, that's just something I'm not concerned with. And they're also like, I can take an iPhone, take better photos than with a mom anyways, because I know how to, you know, we're photographers. So, and I'll, I'll take this moment to bash or not to bash. What's the right <laughs> word to talk about last. I mean, Justin, okay. Justin is shooting on last light because of weather specifically, right? Like he lives in a climate that rains, 99 days out of 100 is ridiculous. So he has to deal with wind and weather. So I understand the need for a last light or green screen and what, what, why you have to do that. But if you're not in those areas, I feel like you have to take the photos on a natural background, whether it be on a basketball court or basketball, volleyball court, on a football field, a soccer field, baseball. You got to do it outside. It's a lot more difficult to do it that way, but that's a good thing. Yeah, not everybody can take that photo. You have to learn how to be an actual photographer. If you're only going to shoot on last light because it's easy and it's duplicatable and it's scalable and all that sort of stuff. So, so, so can everybody else. Everybody else can do the same thing. Literally, you can train somebody in the afternoon to take last light photos for you. Now, they might not get the best expression out of the athlete that a, a professional photographer would, but the photo is going to look decent. All right. So my thought is, is that you have to learn how to be a photographer by taking photos on natural settings. And if you have to fall back on a last light, and by the same template that everybody else in all the Facebook groups have bought, then you have to do it, you know? Um, so that's the way I feel about that. But if you want to take a look at Paul Elise, who's a fantastic ph photographer out of New York, um, very inspiring for everybody. And um, he's come to one of our, our boot camps. And um, uh, this is a photo that he, he took. And I, I'm sorry, but uh, you're not going to get that from an iPhone. That is a fantastic, it's creative posing, Creative lighting is shot in the middle of the day, right? It's not done, you know, when it's dark outside. That's a fantastic image. You know that you're not going to get that with an iPhone. So that's what a professional photographer can do. And that's how they can separate themselves. That photo not only separates him from other, from, from parents, but it separates him from other professional photographers, right? They're going to seek out Paul. And what that is going to allow him to do is start demanding things. Like, you want this photo? Okay, I need the field. I need this time mm -hmm. of day. I need it to be uh, the, the, the teams to come at this time increment so I can have time to produce these images. That's what taking good photos allows you to do. If you don't, then all of a sudden the league's going to start telling you what you're going to do. Like this is the way we do it and you're going to have to bend to me. Well, if you're taking great photos, they're going to end up asking you for your advice because you're a professional. How do I get that photo? And if you want this photo, this is what you're going to have to do. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, it's a great point that, you know, I don't know, I've never thought about it that way. Like, but you're staking your claim, you are the professional and you are creating something that nobody else can create. And you're creating a de demand for your business for specifically mm -hmm. you and and you get to call the shots at right. that point, um, because they, you have proven the value of the services that you're providing. So that does, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it's not, you know, I feel like, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, volume was kind of like that big box item. Everyone was kind of doing the same thing and you're all fighting over rebates and right. freebies and how much is your lowest package and Touch how much keys. stuff does it? Yeah. All this stuff. Yeah. Right. And that's all different now. Like you're, you're changing the value and the worth of volume professional photography, which I think is such a great thing. Um, you know, from being in the industry for so long has changed so much about everything we do. And it mm -hmm. allows you guys to be creative again. Creative. Yes. That's why you're doing this to begin it's with. Fun. That's why most it's people fun. are doing this. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I think we had a, a message come in, like um, regarding the, the family members and the family photos, like how, 
um, how do you schedule like a league, um, you know, when you're projecting that family members are there at the same time um, to make sure that doesn't get you behind in schedule? Do they just come at the end or, you know, how does that usually work on your schedule if you're, if you are offering those types of photos at an event? How you doing, Justin? <laughs> I'm doing good. I was just thinking that uh, we schedule, we try to schedule teams cause I'm the only shooter anyway, but I try to schedule them. 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how big the teams are on average on that league. You make up time and you lose time kind of throughout the day. It's just, that's part of kind of how it goes. Um, sometimes we're way ahead. Sometimes we're way behind. Um, that also dictates how many different poses you, you know, or how many different looks you're going to take of those kids. Do you want to, do you want to hurry the lineup and catch up or do you want to keep, you know, on your pace? You know, there's different ways to speed up and, and slow down during the day but we usually have enough time if you have a good workflow you just throw them in as you're going it doesn't takes maybe another 30 seconds if you if everything's clicking right you know uh if you already if you kind of know how you're going to pose people and you have your lighting set up the way you should uh you're not changing much you're just adding another person to the pose so for us yeah for sure. Yeah, we, I'm not sure if the question is like big family photos. Like the the only time we do a big family group photo would be like for football when the family comes and we have a separate station for those. But I think what we're talking about as far as buddy sh shots and in family shots is if the if the family member is coaching, you know, we have them there and uh, we like to if 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 we can we're, we're on our games th that that day we move the coaches to the front of the line. So that way we can get all the buddy shots done quick. And then we can you know, zoom through uh, the rest of the team on, on the back end. So ideally that's what we do. Move the coaches to the front, get all their buddy photos. If there's any sibling buddy photos, get those done too. And then we go. And I mean, sometimes it'll get you. I mean, I think I had, um, I had a league recently. We had to shoot, I had to shoot that one on my own. I had somebody call out. So I had to shoot that on my own. This was a pretty tight schedule. And the first team that showed up, I think I had, I think I had 13 players and I took eight buddy shots or something like that. That was excessive. That was excessive. I took like a couple hundred photos of one team. So yeah, like, but, but then you have to catch up, you know? Uh, so, it, but you still want to be as organized as possible on the front end, knowing like, okay, this league really likes buddy shots. We need to have a plan. This is how we're going to execute it and then um, try to catch up if you get behind. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the, the, the thing is, though, <laughs> the thing is you can't catch up and be in a hurry and take bad photos because what are you there for if you're going to take bad photos? That's another thing with, like, paper order forms. I had a discussion with the photographer yesterday. It's like paper order forms, you got the money, right? You got the money. So, if, you know, everybody – I know you're guilty of it, Justin. I know you took a bad photo. It was like, screw it. That can never have ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's, everybody's like, you know, everybody's guilty of that. And you already have the money, right? So if you try to hurry and you do bad photos, what are you even out there for? You have to do it. It keeps you honest. And if you want to sell to a board, you be like, look, we're using this platform and we have to do a good job because if we don't do a good job, parents are going to buy it. So we're going to do the best job that we can to make sure we get fantastic photos that you're going to be proud of. And that way we can make a living. And so that's kind of, that's, that's the, the line that you walk being fast, but still taking great photos. Yeah. And, and I think on the other side of that too, is like, I remember I was at one of your uh, picture days, Jay, and the sun was setting and you had these beautiful clouds yet the team wasn't in line yet. And you were like, go get those kids, go get those kids from over there. Right. I got perfect clouds, perfect sunset right now. And I'm like yes. running across the field. I'm like, get over there. We got like eight Absolutely. minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> these kids, but it's like the other way around too. It's like you be aware of, you know, your conditions and, and what you have available. And if it's not moving fast enough and you got this perfect opportunity, go embrace it, go get it. Yes. Right. Yeah. You, you have to be a, a general on your shoot. You still, you know, you still can't just keep your head down and take photos. You have to be aware of your settings and you have to be aware, you know, when the sunset's going to come and like, okay, I've got 15 minutes left. I got two teams. Okay. We can get everybody in and you have to have a talk with the players. Like, look guys, this is a fantastic sunset and you have the opportunity to take beautiful photos. But if you're going to do this, we're going to get through everybody. Know your pose when you get up here. Let's not be cutting up. Don't make your friends laugh. Like you have to, you know, be aware of those things and be ready for them. 
um, and try to explain it to your to your subject so that way you can get through something fast. And if you have enough energy and you have enough uh, uh, authority, the kids will listen to you. You know what I'm saying? And so those are the opportunities to sell because you take great photos, you're going to sell more images on the back back side. So you still have to you know, really pay attention to your surroundings and know what's going on. Take a breath, right? Take a breath, and be <laughs> calm, and then execute your plan. Yeah. Yeah. De- depending on the age group, I start with the first one and then I show everybody that first photo I took down the line. Yeah. And then I had given my yeah. spiel because then they're like, oh, yeah, I love that. So it's, you know, it goes back to getting it clean in camera too. If it looks nice in the back of that camera and you show them that in line and then give them that same spiel, it goes so smooth. Mm-hmm. It goes so much faster because they all want that yeah. cool, that cool picture. Yeah. They're not show used to that. attitude right up, doesn't it? Y- yep. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Jane had a, a question. This is probably for you, Justin. Um, so I'm not sure Jane knows the answer, but what <laughs> extraction software works for you using green screen or a neutral color like white or gray? Um, <laughs> how do you, what do you use to extract? You know, that's, there's, that's another great question, but again, it's whatever workflow works best for your stuff. I know everybody gets sick of hearing that cliche answer, but um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in PixNub for green screen stuff. I, I don't think there's a better software out there for it. Uh, um, I am also a firm believer in remove.bg on Elastolite. I think that works the best. I've tried the pure photo solution. Um, PixNub and Photoshop work together to do that as well on your grays and your whites. And I think they do um, a legitimately good job giving you options to tweak the cutout. It's not perfect the first time, but the secondary part of it through, through that software is really fantastic. Um, but if you get your lighting right and you, and it works with the software you're using to get your cutout, don't change anything. I mean, that's, you're, you're, you're married to that. And that, that kind of goes back to what Jay said, you know, you can give people creative lighting on these cutouts, but your background has to match that for it to look realistic mm. or for it to look cool. Right. And the extra yeah. amount of work you're putting into something like that doesn't necessarily always justify the time spent, mm-hmm. right? If you had if you had to do that to five photos of every every athlete on a you know on a twelve twelve team league, that'd be tough. That's a lot of photos to to Photoshop and to cut out and to to try to manage. Um, but if you have a system, you know we got there's guys that use trailers. That's all they do, and they're fantastic at it. They've built amazing workflows and i think they all use a little bit different software for their cutouts and for their you know backgrounds they do all buy from the same places but at some point you get to the point where you want to be creative and you start you start building your own or you mix and match the ones you already bought so pretty soon you're putting your own flair on it and that's part of creating your style in this industry i think so yeah i don't always agree with what jay says about green screen (laughs) We like the tease. We like the tease. Um, do you have any favorite uh, mirrorless camera recommendations you can share for anyone wanting to get rid of the DSLR and move on the mirrorless? D- that is such a personal thing. My <laughs> recommendation is that you rent some cameras and find out what you like. Um, literally literally rent good. every one of them to see what you like the best. Yeah. Because you can't good. go wrong with any right now. <laughs> Yeah, you just can't. Um, the one. Yeah, of course you have the big ones. You have Sony, uh, Nikon, and Canon. Um, I also like the Lumix, although it's you know it's got its own issues. But I just found the Lumix is a little bit of a surpriser because it has the best screen um, for outdoor, but it also has its downfall. So yeah, I think the best advice would be to rent all the cameras that you can and find which one you like the best. See, he's already talking out both sides of his mouth. He now it's got the best screen, but if you use mirrorless, you want the in, you want the loop, the internal loop anyway with your eyepiece. So you're not you don't need the screen, but now he's no, trying to sell you on the, the screen. It, that you don't even make sense anymore. Who are you? <laughs> that was a question. I don't lay down. Somebody asked if I lay down. I don't I, I don't lay down because I have a mirrorless screen, so I uh, um, can put you the sit. camera on the ground and flip it out, so that way you don't have to lay down. Yeah. So back's good. My back's good. Yeah, Mark, you need to come to a boat ride boot camp. Yes. <laughs> come yes. to the next one. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, um, we got a few minutes left in the chat. Um, and I definitely wanted to touch on uh, what you guys are doing on your YouTube channel, because I think it's so valuable. And, you know, we need more of this type of education. So we got the beard in the boat, right? That's your YouTube channel. Can you talk a little bit about that? We definitely want to make sure you guys have to subscribe. Yeah, this first time. Look how giant those headphones are on your head. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. It's like speed. Yours is speed. Oh my gosh. Sleep. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah, it's a fun thing. Like me and uh Justin, uh we uh talk every day, usually several times a day. And so um we always have a good time with our conversations. And so we thought we'd just, you know, put them out there for you guys. And they're they're edited a good bit. We don't like let everything fly, but they're a lot of fun. And I think um there's always some good nuggets in there for the photographers. Maybe it would be in business or um shooting technique and um yeah i'd so say 99 percent of it is worthless the one percent you get out right. of it though is worth that other 99 percent. so right we're yeah. still we're still trying to figure out what's you know how long we should do it and how often we should do it but uh, i guess the biggest challenge is we're both it's, it's good and bad we're both really busy photographers so it's hard to get our schedule together sometimes on the flip side of that, that means that our all of our experiences are real. Like we are talking about stuff that just happened that day or that week, and um, every week's different. So it's we have all kinds of content. We can just talk about nothing and make it last for an hour. Imagine if we put <laughs> together like stuff we should like if we had a real producer and we actually did like we'd probably be pretty streamlined. It'd be pretty good. Well, maybe, yeah. good. You know, yeah. maybe somebody's out there. Maybe somebody yeah. wants to produce. <laughs> No, it's exciting. Um, I posted the link here in the chat um, for anyone who wants to subscribe so you get notifications on the next episode. I think you guys are trying to do it weekly right now, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's really interesting content and definitely check it out because I myself am highly entertained just tuning in and watching you guys. So. <laughs> that was great. Maybe, we got some changes. A- I think we're going to shorten it up a little bit. We've been going almost an hour, but I don't think everybody wants to watch us that long. And our analytics show that that doesn't really happen. So yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to cut mean, her down a little bit. I think the part I love the most about this is that, well, of course, selfishly for me and Photo Day is that you guys became friends through Photo Day. You met through mm-hmm. Photo Day, right? Yes. And became friends and you live on opposite sides of the country, yet you're like, you're besties. Yeah, so I know. I'm embarrassed to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate to be friends with a volume photographer. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. A lot, I mean, lot, a, lot of similarities. Seen... You know, a lot of similarities. We both had, you know, we both had kids young. Both, you know, built our own businesses. So we have lots to talk about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it's too, it's like nice to have somebody to chat with that you can relate to and help mm-hmm. each other out with advice and even just venting and doing it live on the YouTube channel is really great. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, so anyway, with that said, I know you guys are really busy and you want to get back to doing uh, what you're doing before this. So I thank you for your time today. Um, everyone here, of course, thanks you. And uh, yeah, thanks for answering all these questions and being available and, and sharing um, for sure. Yeah, I know absolutely. we have one question coming in. Uh, when is the next uh, Boat Right Boot Camp? But I was, what I was going to do is just post the, the link for Boat Right Boot Camp. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Boat Right Boot Camp. Let's see here. Um, and cause you got a whole web page for it. So I'm just going to post the, the site for boat rate bootcamp so you can stay tuned, um, when the next one's coming out and obviously just, uh, it will announce it in the photo day users group and Jay usually yeah. posts it all over all the different Facebook groups as well. So, um, when that gets announced for sure. But December, so December is in December. Are we announcing yeah. it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's December. Do we have everything like confirmed? Confirmed? I guess. I Is it know. in Astoria in December? In the rain? No. Oh. No. No. But it's December. It, did you announce it? You were gonna say where it's at in December or no? Uh yeah. We yeah, it's yeah, it's in Winter Park. It'll be in Winter Park, Florida. <laughs> you know, as long as you know, yeah, we'll be doing something in Winter Park, Florida in December. That's oh it's always beautiful there. The weather's perfect. There's no, you know, we've been lucky, we hadn't had any rain. So yeah, we love going to uh, Winter Park and visiting. You know, that's Photo Day's headquarters, so we get to go see the Photo Day team down there. So it's a lot of fun. Awesome! Yes, yes, we can't wait to have you. So we like to be hosts to the uh, good BBC. Sushi. Yes, good sushi next door. <laughs> yes, for sure. I love the sushi. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for your time today. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And yes, in case you're wondering, there will be a replay that goes out. Um, of this webinar and you can view it later. So thanks again, guys. Um, have any questions, feel free to find us at support at photoday.io. 
um, and or find us in the users group. So thanks again. All right. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Justin. Bye. Bye.